Hello, it's Spellweaver with a new microphone no less, we'll see if it's any better than the old one. I have some new things to show you considering the development of Elkins the roguelike. But before I start I'd like to thank those who expressed their interest in the game in any way, all of you who were asking questions, writing feedback, etc. Especially those who put enough trust in me to donate to the project at this stage. As a reminder, the link to the latest public version of the game is in the description. You can get it for free if you want, or support the development with your donation. But let's get to the features. The journal that I was showing you the last time is greatly expanded now. Not only does it contain quests, but also two new tabs, components and recipes. This way you can always consult your journal about what you can craft and what you might need for that, without returning to the lab. The list of components is filled automatically, but it only contains items that you've already seen, to avoid spoilers. For example, this character has just started the game and never picked up any moss, so it doesn't appear among the possible sources for something burdened. But as soon as you take some, it immediately appears in the journal. Recipes tab is similar, except it shows all the unlocked recipes, which for now just means all the recipes, period. But this will change when I introduce the unlocking of recipes into the game. To continue on the subject of journal, you can now have several pop-ups on the screen at once. That's true both for loot pop-ups and for quest notifications. And for mix of both at once, of course. Also, good news for mouse users. Pop-ups are clickable now, leading you to inventory or journal, depending on their type. Additionally, you can click status effect icons to go to the status interface and see the descriptions there, or health bar to go to the character interface. This is all in addition to the normal ways you do that, by hotkeys or icons at the bottom right, of course. Me and the artist spent some time adding new objects to the terrain to make it more lively. Now there are some items on the tables that change between your visits, similar to the bar stand. Devon is also a lot brighter thanks to all the candles. When we added those shelves behind the bartender, I realized that they look really silly when you're on the other side of the wall. It was really an issue from the very start. Wall-mounted objects look as if they are on the both sides, but you could at least pretend that it's like that for things like torches or moss, but now it was getting really distracting. So I changed the way they are displayed and not only for those shelves. Now all wall-mounted objects are only visible from certain sides and gradually fade out as they leave your field of vision. The shelves in particular, along with the fireplace, are only visible when you are in the hall and not when you are in the storage room. Another example, the outside of the stable's walls is covered in ivy, but the inside isn't, so we see ivy from the outside and clean walls from the inside. What this change allows me to do, aside from improvement to immersion, is to place several objects on different sides of the same wall. For example, here we see moss on one side of the wall and the torch mounted on the other side. This required me to tweak the dungeon generation quite a bit, as wall fissures before were placed on per cell basis, and now they are placed per room, so that the wall that separates two rooms can have two objects placed from different sides independently. Also, while working on wall fissures for this particular room template, the circular hallway type, I thought that it would be fitting to sometimes have secrets hidden there. It's really just the perfect place for some small optional loot, and it would be a nice surprise for player. It's also extremely easy to detect using clairvoyance potion. Another good use for it. After I implemented the feature, I encountered the issue of lighting. If there's no torch on this side of the wall, then why would it cast light? Lighting in my game is generally flat and ignores obstacles, but in this particular case it was distracting, and fading the light out along with the light source, felt like someone is flipping the switch in the room as you pass through the door. So I came up with a solution to only cast light in one direction for the wall-bound lights, or to be more exact, to make the light in the opposite direction way dimmer. It required a lot of adjustments to make it look natural, but now I think it works fine. As you can see, those two torches are inside the room, so they cast light only to the west, not to the east, and the room remains lit whether or not I see the torches where the light on the wall itself is dimmed when I move to the other side. Aside from fitting the previously mentioned feature, I feel like this lighting is more natural and realistic. Let's end on the cute note. This is a hedgehog. It's one of the creatures that can be encountered in the woods now. They act similarly to mice, avoiding you and running away if hit. Hitting a hedgehog also deals some damage back to you. 
and unlike mice, vipers ignore them and don't try to attack. It's not really an important addition, just another cute little creature to make the world livelier. So that's it for the update, glad to have you all here. If you're interested, consider subscribing, playing the game, liking, etc, etc. I also have a Twitter, where I post screenshots from development. You can subscribe there too, if you're interested. See you!